Hi everyone, thanks for joining us again today on Stay Connected. Uh, we're with Yvonne Long, and she has an incredible, huge job this time in our lives. Yvonne, tell us a little bit about what's going on with public health. Thank you, thank you for having me today. Um, public health is something that we have every single day in our lives, but we don't always think about. And a lot of people have misconceptions about what exactly public health does. It's mainly for the underserved or those without uh, benefits or those that don't have access to medical care. But my philosophy with public health has always been public health is from the time you're born to the time you pass away. Hmm. And it's, it, it encompasses an entire lifespan and it encompasses everybody's lifespan. So typically public health flies under the radar, except for right now. This is when we come into charge. This is where we uh, come out and do what we always do. One of the main charges of public health is that we investigate diseases. And we have many diseases that are communicable that happen all the time through, throughout the year whether it's a norovirus in outbreak in a long-term care facility, whether it's a hepatitis outbreak uh, due to unclean sanitary conditions in, you know, whether it's a restaurant or just someplace else that you pick it up. It's a hand, you know, it's a fecal oral kind of contamination mm -hmm. that's reportable mm -hmm. and we have to investigate that. If you have come down with E. coli by some means, salmonella, uh, measles, mumps, any of those kind of diseases are communicable and thereby are reportable and are um, by statute reportable. So in a pandemic like this, how prepared were you because of what you do already uh, that you've been doing? You already had some preparedness, but has that elevated? I it mean, has eleva elevated probably a hundred times. Mm -hmm. And the last time we dealt with this really, when you think about it, 2008, 2009 was the H1N1. We had that right. Ebola scare several years, a few years after that, that we were all ramping up to to a certain degree. But fortunately, you know, thank goodness it didn't uh, didn't end here, mm -hmm. didn't land here. So we were very very lucky there. But we deal with flu every year, and right. there are flu is re is reportable to a certain extent if you are hospitalized. So we try to, uh, you know, all, we also look at those. So we were prepared. Mm -hmm. Well, that that brings up something in my mind because not only is it becoming the flu season, but it's allergy season. Exactly. So then, you know, how does a person navigate themselves in their head and saying, am I, is this just the allergy or is this something that I should be worried about? What, do you, what would you tell them? I would tell people that you know your body and mm -hmm. if you suffer from allergies anyway, you know that what allergies feel like to you. And it's true that every year our allergies may be a little bit different. What was blooming last year that our body didn't like and we became allergic to right. it may be different this year and what happened last year may not bloom again for another five or ten years so allergies are very cyclic uh, in that so maybe this year is a bad allergy year for you but it's it's you I tell people listen to your body you know your body mm -hmm. you know that if it, you're feeling fluish you know what it feels like to have a cold you know what it feels like to have uh, really you ate something bad or you feel like felt like you ate something bad um, bringing all of that into conscious awareness of how your body's reacting right. and stuff kind of helps you weed through some of that initial of oh my gosh where was I yeah, what's makes, going on here that makes sense that makes a lot of sense a lot of common sense too right you know if your eyes itch this time of year last year then they it probably might will have, yeah, yeah and it's not COVID, it's, it's, it's the season. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so how about, let's talk about the community a little bit and your outreach to the community. And Garfield County is pretty huge. So you have a lot of staff working and, and a lot of information to get out there. How are you getting that out there? How are people responding? Right, thanks. Um, you know, from the beginning, as soon as we started getting information in, we pulled together what we term our incident management team and that consisted of an incident command our, and it consisted of operations where we broke out our operations into many, many different facets because we knew we would be getting a lot of questions not only from our businesses, our restaurants, our schools, our daycare centers. Uh, we had our whole epidemiology branch. We had, you know, our food security branch yeah. and, you know, it just, our faith-based branch. It just goes on and on yeah. knowing that there would be information coming out for each and every one of those as well as our law enforcement branch, our uh, EMS branch our um, 
a um, medical branch. And um, so they all report to you. They do. And you take all this information and you, what do you do with all that information? I try my best to absorb it and to process it out and to he hear what they're saying, to hear what the needs are, to see where the gaps are, to see what we can do to fill those. And in the beginning, a lot of those gaps were from a lot of our providers mm -hmm. around uh, personal protective gear. And we knew there was gonna be a shortage of that. And we knew that that was gonna be run through really quickly, and it was. And so then it was gone on to the next step of, well, how do we plan next? And our EMS divisions, they did, in this county, did a wonderful job of going out and, and recruiting and getting personal protective gear, vol you know, donated to them mm -hmm. and such mm -hmm. to kind of tie them over a little bit. And we were able to then take, as stores of supplies got shipped into us, we were able to take that and then um, be able to provide our long-term care facilities uh, assisted livings, group homes, those sort of places with the personal protective gear they need that they don't usually have on hand. So we were able to manage all that and coordinate all that and work through that. And that's the same way that has gone for testing, uh, working with the hospitals. Our hospitals have done just a fabulous job of testing, even though I know a lot of people don't realize we've done a lot of testing in the county. We really have done a lot of testing. Well, and give us a little bit more information on there because that's what we hear. Most of what I see is coming from the governor's office or statewide, and I never get, I never can find out what's happening in our in local, local community, and that's, community. that's why we're here. So tell us about that testing aspect, because as far as I know, we don't have any. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. Um, I will say up front that by the, the data that we keep and the number of tests that we know that have been performed in, mm -hmm. this, in this county, our per rate capita of testing is actually higher than the state's. Oh, nice. So we're doing a pretty good job there. We don't have a test for everybody. If you think you're symptomatic or you think you're not feeling well, you're probably still not gonna get a test at least for another couple, two, three weeks or such. Uh, testing is starting to really open up with the amount of different tests that are coming about and that are valid tests, good mm -hmm. tests, mm -hmm. reliable tests. So we'll see more and more testing as that goes on. But in the beginning, we really had to meet the criteria set right. forth by the CDC in the mm -hmm. state of being mm -hmm. able to test someone. So there's people in the community that have been tested. Oh, yes. There's yeah. probably a 1,000 people who have been tested in this um, county. In, in this county? In right. this county. Okay. And that mm -hmm. includes, is all that testing taking place in the hospitals? It takes place in the hospitals and a couple of the medical providers uh, throughout the county as oh, well. Okay. So what is a what does somebody do in a proactive way to to fight the virus? Is there something proactively they can do with before testing and just in health wise? Well, I wish there was say that there was a little magic, you know, bits of information and unfortunately we know this virus ha really attacks and affects older our older population mm -hmm. and that they're the most vulnerable and then we have the second level of people with underlying medical conditions no matter what your age is mm -hmm. so if you are immunocompromised in any way if you're going through chemo if you have kidney or renal failure if you have lung issues of mm -hmm. any type you're going to be really susceptible to right, this right but if you have a good immune system maybe you're really lucky <laughs> that, really? you, okay. that you fight it off. Maybe that you don't have any symptoms or you're only down for a day or two. Mm -hmm. We really don't know enough about this virus yet to make those true predictions of really healthy people or younger people are not going to get ill because we've seen it happen mm -hmm. and we've seen them pass away from it. So, you know, it's, it, I think it really depends on where your body is um, immune wise fi in fighting capability wise mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the amount of viral load you get at any given time mm -hmm. so if you get a fairly light viral load it may not affect mm -hmm, you if you have mm -hmm. no underlying conditions and you're really healthy um to date what are our fatalities two yeah. really two in the county wow that's pretty awesome I think it is. Yeah. I think it's, it says uh, what a great job everyone has done mm -hmm. in staying at home and keeping us locked down. We went into that a little bit earlier than a lot of the state did. We went into it with um, Eagle County and Picking County. We all three made the decision to go in about a week or so before the governor did at a, at a 
low 25 rate and then moved it on down to a 10 person rate. So I think that bought us a little bit of time. It was it helped stop the progression we were seeing at least come into this county uh, somewhat. And that leads me into getting the, you know, the community starting to open up again and business starting to open up, up again. So how are you preparing people for that? Right. I say that, you know, it's really exciting and I know people are, are excited to be able to hopefully just even get a tiny, just feeling like you get a tiny yeah. bit of your life back just feels so good. Yeah. You know, we all want to be out and enjoy our state of where we live and, and have some normalcy of what it used to look like. And while that still is, I think, mm -hmm. a long way away, a little bit helps, you know, just a little bit of that sunlight coming in helps uh, be, people be able to move forward and think, okay, you know, it may be a few more weeks, but at least I can do this now. Mm -hmm. and, and in preparing the community for it, I, you know, I just like to remind people that we've opened the door a sliver to what we're going to be able to do in the month of May. And really the month of May is buying us some extra time to make sure that the, the stop gaps we have in place and the, the things that we have in place to be able to look at this and work at it are going to be effective. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a, a good opportunity for how businesses can open up and see how that business is gonna run from them, if it's gonna work being able to open up at a, such a small scale or if they, you know, some business, we have a lot of businesses who say, you know, I'm gonna wait, I'm not gonna right. open up now. It doesn't, it doesn't make financial sense for me to open up now. Right, there's a lot of common sense out there to be used and- There really and is. Your own, your own gut feelings about your business, your family, you know, and that, and you must be out in the community. I mean, you do get out a little bit. I mean, I, no, I don't. So yeah, <laughs> I have been. So you don't get that person going, hey. No, I don't. I need to ask you a question. No, but I get a phone call. Oh, I get okay. a phone call. I get an email. Mm -hmm. um, I get, I get the message. They get to me. Believe mm -hmm. me, they do. Are you getting out in the sun? Are you getting? I do. I ride my bike to work, oh, and good. so I do do that since the weather's. Um, kind of lightened up a little bit and got turned really nice this past week or so I've been doing that and but I go I go home and I go to the office and maybe once every two weeks I might venture into the grocery store for just a couple of things but uh, that's been about my life for mm. about the past mm -hmm. six to eight weeks so you're looking you're looking forward to some change I am you know I I miss golf huh. and I miss um, working outside and hiking and walking and um, I miss seeing my family. Mm -hmm. um, I really mm -hmm. miss seeing them. Oh, yeah, that's the hardest part. That's the really hard part. Well, you just said golf, so the golf courses are open. They are. What, just, what other recreational things can people look forward to doing that I, they haven't been doing already? Well, I think that um, that's, you can still go bicycling. Mm -hmm. You can still go hiking. Uh, just check where you're going to go hiking to see, make sure that trail is open and that if you drive up to a trail and you see a lot of cars, I wouldn't be getting on right. that trail. I mean, you know, it, right. just, you know, back off and, and find something else that to do. That common sense thing. And I, again, a lot of it really is common mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. And um, just, you know, there's, we have a lot of activities. Mm -hmm. I think you could go fishing. I think you can. Right. Yeah. So if I'm going, if I'm fishing and nobody's around me, do I need to have a mask on? That may seem like a, dumb, a weird it's question, not, but but really, you know, the mask. I don't think it's going to really affect the fish. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> if there's no one else around, I I certainly wouldn't be wearing a mask. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. Is there anything else that you would like to tell everyone um, in in moving forward with what's happening today? You know, I I think I just want to thank everyone. I want to thank everyone for the cooperation and the how people have come together as communities. I've seen a lot of people come together in the community and it feels good to sort of to give back to those community roots and, and local roots and, and such and, and just have that bonding in that way and, and feel a part of a community. And mm -hmm. everyone has done such a, a great job. I know we're, we all have good days and we all have bad days around this. I certainly have. Um, but you know, it's it's amazing to see and heartwarming to see the good stories that that do come out of mm -hmm. it. And and really, we don't know yet. It's been really really hard. But I feel like I I'm optimistic and feel like there will be good that comes out of this mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. We just don't know what it is yet. Well, thank you for joining me today. I think this is really important for everyone to hear and get to know you. Thank you. Like I have, and um, and thank you guys for joining us as well and uh, stay tuned for, for some more episodes 
of Stay Connected here in the Roaring Fork Valley.